Good day, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I'm doing great. I hope you are too. Today we're going to go off and do a vlog on a comedy duo that I have loved since I was a kid. I remember when we were in church, um, when I was little, they would have kind of like um, ice cream socials every once in a while where everybody would come and bring, you know, like a potluck dinner or whatever, and they would set up a movie screen down in the basement and everybody in the church would come and kind of share food and um, they would always play Laurel and Hardy. So today we're going to do a movie called The Finishing Touch from 1928. These were like the heyday of Laurel and Hardy, How Roach Studios. Um, Stan Laurel was really kind of the comedy mastermind behind a lot of the gags and writing a lot of this stuff. He had a great team that he worked with, but Ollie really just let Stan kind of be in control of the comedy. So this is a really funny one and we're going to go out and see the filming locations. Um, some are there, some are not, but this is going to be a fun one. I love this movie and I think you will um, enjoy these filming locations. So let's go off to Cheviot Hills and uh, go have some Laurel and Hardy slapstick fun today. Days with Jordan the Lion, it begins right now. And just so people don't think you're being neglected, you've already been to the park, haven't you? And maybe we'll take you again at the end of this vlog. What do you say, bud? I'll let you rest while I'm out vlogging. And today we have a special Patreon sunglass vlog for Megan S. Megan S, I hope you are a Laurel and Hardy fan. Now let's roll. You can see Cheviot Hills was established in 1924. Our movie came out in 1928. All right, my friends, our primary filming location for this movie, Finishing Touch, was right here, actually. It's no longer here. Um, you'll notice that there's quite a bit of cars coming through here, kind of a popular neighborhood pass through. But at the time when they were filming this, this was a pretty new development and so kind of in the distance you can see a few houses there's two houses there's one back here and one off in that direction that you see in the movie but at the time this was an empty lot and the house that they used for the filming location they built specifically for this that's why at the end of the movie you see the whole place get destroyed and that's why we can't visit it today but I'm gonna show you kind of how this movie lays out now. This is a great movie. I love this one. This is so funny. And Laurel and Hardy are just the king of slapsticks or the kings of slapstick. So timing is everything in slapstick. And how the house would have been situated originally is that the house would have been facing right here. And we're gonna go back to where kind of the movie would have started which is in the back of the house. That's where we see um, the lettering and everything pops up on the screen that says these guys are finishers and that they can finish anything even if it's never been started. So they have their truck that has bad brakes. It would have been where this house is. Roughly it would have been kind of in the center of the property back here. And Ollie would have said to put that rock underneath the wheel because of the bad brakes and before they can do that the truck starts rolling backwards into the back of the house which would have been originally right there so I'm gonna post up some photos as I talk about this so you'll be able to visualize the truck rolling back this being the back of the house originally back here and they're talking to uh, Basically what happens is the guy who is having the house built tells them that he wants to have the house finished by noon on Monday. And Ollie says, why, we can have it done by today for an extra $500, which is what they're offered. Now, the way it's supposed to be laid out is that the, um, the house would have been built right over here with the chimney side towards us and across the street is the house that they always have problems with. It's actually a hospital. Now, it's not really across the street, but the house that they used for the hospital still does exist. It's about four blocks that way. We'll go visit it. 
So I just want to uh, kind of lay out how all this would have been done when they filmed this because I had to watch it a few times to kind of figure out how it was all situated. But I think I have it figured out. Now you do see right here on this corner, back in the filming location, you see the homeowner. He is standing right here looking at the boys in the house that way. So you can see how barren it was when I match up that shot. And you can see that the road still goes the same direction and everything at the time that it did in the movie. Now, the way that they would have actually built the house for this movie, the way that I have figured it out is it seems like probably 20 feet or 30 feet back was where the front of the house was. So right here, you can see the garage and a tennis court and everything. The house really would have had the two pillars right here and no steps at the time that they're starting it. And what's going on in this movie is that they're hired to finish this house. Now what they don't tell you in the movie and that by reading up more I was able to find out was that in the original script, what they didn't put in this movie was that there was another team of builders building this house. And the, uh, the hospital across the street was complaining so much that they end up quitting because of the noise. The hospital keeps complaining about the noise and they can't build the house without noise. So they quit and Laurel and Hardy are hired to finish the job. So we see it's an angled shot. Um, you'll see one pillar and it's before they have steps pointed this way. And you can actually see this road right here in the background. You can see next to nothing <laughs> along that way. But they start building the house and what they're trying to do is do it as quiet as possible. So they're trying not to make any noise, which picking up boards and things like that are gonna make noise. We see them inside the house trying to uh, scoop up the nails with a shovel. And of course they're creating a bunch of noise. So then we get some shots of them not only working on the front of the house out here, but then also um, what would have been this side of the house, that is where um, the police officer is monitoring them and he's sitting out there and Ollie is trying to have the board come out that window and he's gonna walk across it, but Stanley ends up going in side and cutting it in half. So we see a lot of the, uh, like the board hitting the police officer and everything out to this side. And um, then eventually, as the movie continues on, they do, it says, despite their own efforts, finish the job. And um, so we see an angled shot of the finished house that would have been right here. And they're getting their $500 for doing the job. Now the, like I said, you'll see it right here that the um, chimney was actually on this side and that the house was right here. The front of the house would have been coming towards us and there was no driveway at the time. Um, as soon as the guys get their $500, you see a bird fly over, land on top of the chimney, and right then Ollie says, why this house is built like Gibraltar, and the bird lands on top of the chimney. The chimney falls into the inside of the house, destroying the roof, and right out front of here, the guy tries to get his money back from those two, and they start playing keep away, passing the money back and forth, and then eventually, it moves over into this side of the yard where they're basically playing football. They're running around, passing the money back and forth, and eventually Stanley gets tackled over here. But while all that's happening, you see a house back in this direction, and then you see another house that would have been behind the house that they used for the prop house. The one that was directly behind is no longer there, but the one that was over here that has kind of the storybook Tudor type um, beams and everything, that house is still there. So we'll go over and see it. But they end up basically, <laughs> as they're fighting um, with the guy over the money, the guy throws a rock at Stanley and hits him in the chest. So then they start throwing rocks back and forth and they throw rocks through the front of the house, destroying the window. And then picks up some paint and goes to throw it on the guy right here that hired them to build the house and accidentally throws it on the police officer over here. So over on this section of the house, that's where we see the officer 
over here, he would have got doused with the paint, and then when the nurse comes over to yell at him, she falls in the tub of paint that's also over on that side of the house. So then they eventually all end up going around to the back of the house, which is kind of where I was showing you the start, and <laughs> since they're not getting their money, they're having a rock fight in the back of the house. So we'll go back over to that side and I'll kind of show you where that would have happened again. So this is the official front of the house now. So where the side of the, well, the front of the house is, that's where the chimney would have originally been. And while they're in there working, you can see out the windows. I don't know how they would have cheated it unless they built like a fake house across from what they used as the hospital and then filmed it out those windows. But when they're inside working where the chimney is and everything, out the windows you can actually see the exact hospital that should have been over here you can see that across the street and it's not a painting because you see the the palm trees that are in front kind of billowing from the wind but towards the end of the movie when they realize they're not going to get their money they're now in the back again where the truck was originally parked so the truck would have been right there pointed going that way and the back of the house in the movie would have been right there where the side of the house is now. They remove the stone from under there and <laughs> the truck goes backwards and destroys the house. Now apparently um, the way it ends is not the way it was supposed to end. Um, the truck was actually supposed to go all the way through the entire house and out the other side but apparently when they were building the house they didn't follow the plans that the um, designer had laid out and so when it rolled backwards it ends up destroying the front of the house and then just sitting there but they thought that was good enough so they went ahead and left it i wonder if the people that live in this house know that <laughs> this was the famous backyard of the laurel and hardy movie not only is this a great movie, but right in the first part, right where the credits roll, I was amazed to see photography by George Stevens. So cool. George Stevens, famed director of Giant, Greatest Story Ever Told, Place in the Sun, Diary of Anne Frank. So cool to see that he was getting his start working on these pictures. Now let's go around the corner and I'll show you the house that we can see in the background. Um, we end up seeing, because it's a shot of the back of the house, I'll have to show you the front and I can show you a little bit of the sides that will verify that this is the house. Some of the things that we can see on the side will, will match it up. Yeah, in the background you can actually see where the cars split off right here. And this, this road right here didn't even exist. It's just like a little two tire track self-made road where uh where club is now but the house we're looking for is right around the corner over here on forester and then we'll head over to the hospital house and i'll tell you why Something that they did in the movie that was changed from the script made a big difference in, I think, how funny the movie was. So it's going to be this house right here that you see in the background. And the way that you can tell is you see that chimney and you'll see that point right there. And below it is the arched garage. And there was a building behind it. So when we get over here, you'll be able to tell that this was, that you can see that driveway that's right there. And the whole shot would have been, you know, of course, coming from this angle, seeing the back part of the house. But like I said, you can match up the chimney and that side. And just knowing that the garage is underneath it, that paints the rest of the picture. So this, actually would have been one of the first development houses here in the this neighborhood. Laurel and Hardy filmed a lot of movies back in those days here in this area, Culver City, because it was underdeveloped and they can kind of do whatever they want, which is what they did. A lot of their movies, they would have a temporary set on the land and then destroy it in the movie like they did in this one. 
Eh, three, four simple little blocks away is the house they used for the hospital. Definitely some amazing houses in this area, that's for sure. Wow, so this is great. This hasn't changed hardly at all. That is really, really cool to see. Now, other than this would have been all grass at the time and the driveway would have been right here where it still is. There was no driveway up here. But other than that, the hospital looks exactly the same. They had a, uh, well, you know, a hospital sign right here that ends up getting knocked over in the movie. But there was a, uh, also a hospital sign right underneath the balcony, kind of right here. Other than that, this matches up exactly. We see the nurse come out of here and complain to the police officer about all the noise from across the street, the construction. Now, what I was telling you, the change in this was that I think was for the better. Originally in the, the script, it was a male nurse and they decided to change it to a small, pretty, petite, female nurse knowing that her you know <laughs> bossing everyone around would be funnier than if there was you know a male nurse over there bullying the guys around and I think they're totally right because then they get to do that scene where um, she comes over and yells at him and when she starts walking away she uh, she thinks that she splits her pants because Stanley rips the sandpaper they pull that prank on her but other than that I mean this house looks exactly exactly the way it did you see a lot of closer shots right there when she's coming out and complaining on the front steps and everything but yeah this is pretty much exact and that's pretty much it i mean there really are no other things that you see in this movie it all takes place right there on that plot of land where we saw where the prop house would have been and other than that you see you know the hospital out the window so the only thing that i can figure is that they may have shot from a house that would have been right here so it's clearly a new house here so it definitely wouldn't have been here but that's the only way i could have thought that they cheated those shots when they're showing them working on the inside of the house with the fireplace and there's the two windows on either side of the fireplace you can see the hospital right here across, so that's the only way they could have filmed it. You can see in front of us is Fox Studios. You can see the Fox right there. Sorry, the the X is covered up by the pole, but you can see faux stud. <laughs> there, there's proof of the X. All right, I made a promise. Time to keep my promise. I'm reading the rules. Do you really have to say abandoning your animal is prohibited? Come on now. I don't see anyone here to enforce that either. Oh, there's a buddy. And they also don't want your dog smoking or drinking in the park either. No smoking or drinking in here this time, Jaw. Oh, he's playing with a ball now. Oh my god, did he just pee on that dog's wheelchair? Ja, what the hell? What the heck? You guys just saw him. What did you do? What did you do? What did you do over there? I saw you, I caught you. Ja, I caught you over there. I saw you. 
You peed on that dog's wheelchair. <laughs> All right, my friends, I think we're gonna call it a day. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. We got a little filming location in, a little Hal Roach history, a little Laurel and Hardy history, even George Stevens thrown into the mix. This was a fun one for me. Thank you all for watching. Thank you, especially Megan S. for this is your Patreon sunglass vlog. Uh, thank you, Linda McCormick, Sylvia Duvall, Pilar Jimena, uh, Steve Spears, Matthew Kent, Dustin Parks, and Mitzi Alarcon for becoming my newest Patreons. Thank you all for watching. We'll catch you all next time. Goodbye.